The word defibrillator for today, where we're trusting God for a word from within the word. Matthew 5 and verse 38. Now, it just comes often. Maybe that's a good one for us to deal with at a later stage. But uh, verse 37, well, 36. And do not swear by your head, for you are not able to make a single hair white or black. Let your yes be simply yes, and your no be simply no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. Verse 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the evil man who injures you. But if anyone strikes you on the right jaw or cheek, turn to him the other one too. Excuse me? So why was there that change? You know, before Jesus, it was an eye for an eye. And after Jesus, he goes, turn the other cheek. Now, he has a take on that statement. Is why would someone advise you to not retaliate if somebody comes up against you? Well, it's a simple fact because, you know, if I'm here to defend you, if I'm your redeemer, if I'm your Lord, if I'm your savior, if you're supposed to cast your burdens upon me, well, what are you doing about it? Why are you getting involved? Now, if we had to kind of go attack in an, an embassy, just say the two of us, we go to the embassy and we try and smack the ambassador, that creates an international incident, doesn't it? It does, eh? So what happens if I'm sitting in a, in a restaurant and uh, we decide to go and smack the ambassador of another country. Well, you see, we're not attacking him. We're attacking his country. Because what will happen, the response from his country will be to our country, not even to us, and say, excuse me, are you guys starting war with us? Why is it that you are smacking our ambassador around? But let's say we went and we did it at a restaurant and he retaliated. Well, then it's not going to be an international incident, isn't it? Because he is now taking the matters into his own hands. And therefore, he must sort it out himself. Sure, he might get some assistance, but it's not going to be classed as an international in incident because he got involved. So the same thing for you and I. It's if you retaliate in any way, aren't you taking away what you've given to Jesus? Aren't you taking away his responsibility if you and I take it into our own hands? The Bible does say, who shall defend God's elect except for God himself? Take up your position, stand firm, and watch how the Lord your God will deliver you. And when at all possible, live at peace with your neighbors, allowing enough space for my wrath for vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You see, as soon as we retaliate in any situation, besides the fact that that's not a, a very wise thing to do, especially when it comes to being an example of ambassadors for the kingdom, is we take away Jesus' ability to defend on our behalf. Because we're taking his responsibility away from him. And that's a good demonstration to the people around us and say, I thought... Jesus was your Lord and Savior. Why are you getting involved in that argument? Why are you trying to defend him? Why are you trying to defend yourself? Isn't it up to him? So by us turning our, our, our cheek, our other cheek, we are basically going, I am not going to get involved. I am responsible to be obedient to the Father and to his word, and I am not to re retaliate. And many times, I have promised myself I'm not going to say a thing. I'm not going to retaliate. And I do. And you know what? It's a massive fight from there on. Massive fight. And we do know that hurting people hurt people. So why people do that to us is because they're hurting. And we're supposed to be responding with love because loved people love. Now, if somebody hurts you and you respond back with hurt, do we actually understand that we're loved by the kingdom, by the Father, by His Son, by the Holy Spirit? Do we bear testimony in our reaction to others? Boy, I'm the first person to stand up 
and fight against and defend. And I should be the last. I should be the last, if ever, to get involved. And I think I pray, well, I pray should be this. Heavenly Father, if I ever find myself, if we ever find ourselves in a place where we feel we need to defend, we need to interject, and we need to get involved, please remind us that in order to get you to be there for us, we must take that step back. And for us to pray, Father, what is it that you have me do? And it's quite easy to work out those answers because if you say, Father, what is it that you have me do? We go to your word, Father, and all the examples are there of what we should do in that situation. And Father, we know it's not to get physically involved and retaliate. Father, we thank you for that strength. We thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, that you speak loud to us so we can hear, that you can calm us down, that we can bite the tongue, that we don't respond and get involved, thus taking away your involvement for us. May we have the strength to take up our position, stand firm, and to watch how you will deliver us. That we can live at peace with our neighbors, allowing enough space for your wrath, for your vengeance, Father. Because you will be there for us. You will stand in the gap for us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <gasps>